Well, already, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm a young woman of color in an old white man's world. Let's say it like it is. I'll call a spade a spade. Um, and, you know, I'm not supposed to be there. So anything that can be picked out or pointed out to prove that I'm not supposed to be there will be and is. I think obviously uh, the message is always the most important thing, but any good politician knows that to try and deliver a message, they need to have all of the other pieces in place. And so if people are focusing on appearance, uh, there may be uh, a situation where the politician hasn't got all of those pieces right yet. Uh, and you've seen a lot of, of politician pictures where you know they roll up their sleeves or they're wearing a jean shirt and and jeans to be more uh, you know the common uh, the common man and, and blend in more easily there's a certain expectation that you're you're there as a public figure and that um, and that you'll adhere to a certain dress code We live in a digitally driven culture. Every message that is delivered to the public has a corresponding image. That is extremely true with politics. Politicians have certain ideals and policies that need to be communicated to the public. Their dress is a key part of that message. Addressing the public explores how politicians use their dress as a form of communication. As well, how media culture has created an ideal image of a politician and the criticism that transpires from opposing that image. Well, wardrobe is really one part of image, and I think it's important to recognize that uh, politicians, like any other brand, are just that. They're a brand. Uh, and of course, a brand promise involves a number of different things, including uh, what the you know what the the message is, what the promise of the brand is, and so uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, author, you know, ensuring that whatever the politician is selling or is communicating is authentic to who they are and what they believe, uh, and then. Only then can you start to look at the image that might go with that. And so it is one piece of it. It's an important piece, but there are a lot of other pieces that go with it. I think most, most uh, people in politics would wear what I would call business attire. Uh, and that has a whole range, but you wouldn't see uh, men walking in in Bermuda shorts into the House of Commons. Um, it's because you are in a public role, you are fulfilling a public responsibility, and there's a certain expectation that you're, you're there as a public figure and that, um, and that you'll adhere to a certain dress code, uh, which is a fairly neutral business dress. It depends what the, what's in, what's in the docket for the day, I guess, what's the plan for the day. Um, but usually there is a lot of consideration that goes into it because based on cultural sensitivity, based on which community I'm going into, um, what type of events I'm going to, um, it needs to be, I need to make sure that my clothing is um, sensitive to cultural norms, but also to the environment, um, the, the weather, but also what type of activity I'm doing. So if it's Parliament, then I'm making sure that it's um, business casual to business formal wear. Um, if it's a community rally, then I, I'm in jeans and boots, and uh, if I'm going canvassing, then I've got walking shoes on. Um, if I'm at a South Indian event or a South Asian event, I'm in a sari or a Punjabi suit, and a Chinese event, I'm in a Chinese outfit. So it's just, it depends where I'm going, what I'm doing. And well, um, wardrobe is like a uniform, and, and uh, you, you pick the right uniform for uh, the event and for the context. Clearly, you don't want to be wearing a, a suit in the middle of summer at a, at a picnic, uh, but you don't want to be taking shorts into a mosque or a mandir or a church either. So um, you do think about what you're going to wear to be respectful and to uh, be appropriately dressed in the context that you're going to be received in. 
Um, I, I think you have to be conscious that in uh, a media, an age of media, um, people are going to be watching the way you looked, uh, look and they're going to be multitasking and so often they're not even listening to what you're saying. Sometimes the sound is turned off. I think you have to be conscious of the way you look. If people are critical but it's the way, you know, it's the way I feel comfortable looking, I, um, I kind of shrug it off. You can't please everybody. Women are held to a different standard than men are, I mean, with everything in life. But um, as politicians, I think we're a lot more uh, criticized or a lot more, we need to pay a lot more attention to our appearance. When I was, when I was young, I, uh, there was a period in my life where I tried to dress in a very gender neutral way. I never wore a dress or a skirt. I wore, uh, uh, jeans or pants all the time uh, and felt I wanted to play against sexual stereotypes and then I got to a point in my life where I just decided you know what if I like wearing skirts or dresses I'm gonna wear them because I like to. Over the past few years our society has evolved into a rapid paced media cycle. In the past news had been reported on a 24 hour cycle. Now, news is reported on or commented on in a 24-minute or even 24-second cycle. The change in our society has changed how we view politicians. Anything and everything they do, say, or wear is noticed and commented on. A politician's identity is up for public consumption. It gives everybody a voice, a very public voice, in how a politician looks. And so all of a sudden, uh, people who you know, might only have once talked in their living room about the appearance of a politician may, might talk quite publicly about that. And so I think that's the biggest change is that it really has allowed for um, exposure to opinion on, uh, on the appearance of politicians. It's like anybody in a profile position. Uh, obviously, you have to be aware that the media will capture, you know, a certain, you know, whether it's 30 seconds or 30 minutes of, of whatever you're saying and doing. And so it's important that you pay attention to all of the details as a politician. It's interesting, you know, there are probably more comments made uh, in the media about how a woman dresses than how a man dresses. Um, and, um, um, you know, I don't know why that is, but, but uh, certainly uh, anecdotally, you know, sort of study of one person, um, I've certainly seen many more comments about how a woman politician dresses than how a man uh, politician dresses. Uh, females in general. Uh, typically, uh, style and fashion uh, is commented on more in relation to, to women than men. Uh, I also think we're quite accustomed to old white guys in, uh, in politics, and so when there is uh, a different image, people, are, you know, people notice it and tend to comment on it. No matter what, a politician's image will always be considered, evaluated, and critiqued. Whether a politician opposes a typical expected look or their dress doesn't match their message, there will be commentary. We can only change the dialogue when politicians are commented on equally. I don't want it to change me as a person. And being able to put myself together and looking professional and having a little bit of flair, that's my style, it's what I do. And so I'm gonna to continue to do that and that's what I did. I owned it, and then people stopped talking about it. Once they re once they realized that they weren't going to be able to bully me into feeling inadequate or feeling like I was just a fashionista and not a real MP. That's, I guess, what it was. It was questioning my ability to be an MP because I cared about my image, because I was aware of my image and cared about it. Um, I guess people questioned whether I really should be there. And the expectation was that, you know, I was just gonna be a dud. But then once I started to speak and speak forcefully in the House of Commons, um, people started to, jaws started to drop and people 
I guess, started taking me seriously. So I'm glad that we were able to do that. In politics, I think because there are relatively few people of color who are elected to public office, I think they do face uh, more scrutiny. I think it's gender, I think it's age, I think it's ethnicity that uh, there is an expectation that they're not going to have the experience or the competence to do the job. You have to eliminate distraction when you're trying to deliver a message. And so I think good politicians know that and they understand that they need to get the, the palette right and then they can deliver their message more clearly. Um, I think the way to deal with it primarily is to keep defying those stereotypes by electing more women and electing more people of colour. Um, and, and then the default won't just be older white men. Uh, they'll just be one demographic amongst many, but that today, sadly, is not the case. We don't have the diversity we would like. Yeah, and I think we're, we're moving to a much more accepting, uh, much more open society, and I think that's a very good thing. And Canadians made that choice to pick them, that person, to represent them, and uh, we shouldn't be treating people differently just because of their age or their race or their gender or sexual orientation or ability. We should just be treating people with respect for the fact that they're a human being, period. But it's not the case. Far, far better to have my wife decide than for me. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not particularly smart when it comes to uh, wardrobe issues, so I uh, definitely was getting advice about it. I mean, you can imagine Stephen Harper dressed like Drake. It just, you know, it's just not a look that would work for him. But if I see YouTubes on my website or on my Facebook site, and I think, oh my goodness, I'm wearing that same jacket I wore here and here and here, you want to, you want to change it up. So I find I'm, I'm, I have more clothes than I used to have. The color of my lipstick really doesn't change my ability to debate in the House of Commons.